Two cents, I'd marry a truck driver. Daddy, do you mean it? I most certainly do, Emily. As a matter of fact, it might not be bad to have a truck driver in the family. Well, I, I, I didn't mean that I literally would marry a truck driver if I, if I ran out on Prince Paul, but what I did say is that I wish I could find one man that didn't want the Baldwin money and wasn't always getting fresh. Of course, he... He could be a truck driver or anything else if he was a nice guy. Before you decide on that, you better make up your mind whether or not you're going downstairs and marry his royal nibs. The guests are waiting. Mm. Well, let them wait. Oh, listen, Daddy. Paul's been married four times before, and he's twice my age. And the only thing he wants is the Baldwin bank account. Anyway, he plucks his eyebrows. Mm, and he's always popping his heels with the heel. Yes. Emily. Robert Cornelius, whatever has gone wrong? Shh. Emily, I insisted you come down at once. Perhaps she has been taken ill. No, I heard voices. Speak to her, Paul. Emily, Emily, my pigeon. That's done it. I won't marry a man who calls Robert. me pigeon. Robert, let me in. Well, uh, just a minute, Sally. You better beat it, honey. Go down the back way. Emily! Oh, poor mother. Yes, well, I'm quite sure your mother will live through it. Robert Cornelius Baldwin. And I'd much rather what? see you give up this heel clicker now than I would have your heart broken with a divorce at the end of the year. I'll go to Helen's. You pack me a suitcase and I'll pick it up tonight. Yeah, give me time enough to get things quiet. Oh, Daddy, you're a darling. Here, here. Robert, open your uh, take the roadster. It's in the alley. And don't forget your coat. She's more to be pitied than censured. She's more to be helped than despised. Uh, yes, my dear. <laughs> Attract any attention. Oh, fair, please. Oh. I'm afraid this is all I have. I, I took a walk and forgot my handbag. In them clothes? Yeah. Sorry, lady. What's this for? So you can return my dime. Uh, What's your name? Emily Bald. Uh, Emily Smith. And you're Mr. Richard Hughes. Oh. Isn't it sort of early to be going to a masquerade? Oh, I'm not going to a masquerade. I, I, uh, I model clothes in a store. Oh, I and, see. Uh, and uh, a man, a uh, department manager, uh, he, he insulted me. So, so I ran out of the store and I jumped on this bus and I, I forgot that I didn't bring my money with me. Why don't you hit him with something? Yeah. I don't know why stores keep men like that on the payroll. Oh, neither do I. They're not industrious or conscientious and loyal. You've got to be industrious and conscientious and loyal to get anywhere in this world. Isn't it the truth? New York's a tough town. There's lots of competition. Of course, I'm from Illinois myself. I'm from Indiana. Yeah, but Illinois isn't Illinois anymore. Indiana's changed, too. But a man who works hard and is conscientious can get along anywhere. Yes. I'm reading another book on how to succeed, mm -hmm. how to get off on the right foot at 
Say, I've missed my stop. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thanks for helping me out. Well, that's all right. Say, uh, will you have dinner with me tonight? <laughs> so I can return your dime? Oh, the heck with the dime. Look, there's a health food restaurant at 59th and Lexington. Will you meet me there at 7.30? All right, Mr. Hughes. Right, thanks, Miss Smith. <laughs> What it will mean when it gets into the papers. You've spent a lifetime building up a dignified business, and now you deliberately assist Emily in making us the subject of cheap, nasty gossip. Yeah, well, I think the Baldwin Department store can survive the catastrophe. No, oh, well, then think of our feelings, mine and Prince Paul. I am thinking of them. But I think it's time somebody gave Emily a little consideration. Robert Cornelius Baldwin. Don't Robert Cornelius Baldwin me. You want a prince for a son-in-law, more than Emily does for a husband. I'm on Emily's team, and that's that. Oh, please, please, let us not fight. Perhaps my dear Pigeon was nervous and upset. So many preparations. Oh, so much excitement. Oh, you poor darling. You've been very patient in understanding. I think I should like uh, a canopy of caviar. Oh, Jerome, come right along. Give him some ham and eggs. Ham and eggs, sir. you're here. You sure got me into hot water. I know it. I heard everything. Oh, poor Daddy. Never mind about that. Now what? I've had the most exciting afternoon. I went to Helen's and she loaned me the suit and I, I've been dodging reporters and... Oh, Daddy, I think I found him. Huh? Well, the truck driver? Oh. What, so soon? No, he wasn't a truck driver. He was on the top of the bus and he loaned me a dime. Oh, the conductor. Oh, no, he's just a man. The man I've been looking for, I think. Well, you think? Look out for these casual pickups, Emily. I don't think you ought to see him again. I'm going to have dinner with him. Dinner? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, Poodles. You might run into trouble. Daddy, I'm going to look for trouble. I want to prove to myself that there are some decent men left in this world. Oh, Daddy, please, you've got to help me. Did you fix me a suitcase? Yes. Yes, it. Now then, Poodles. How about your mother? Oh, now, you tell her that I called, and I, I told you to say that I was going to California. Oh, that's no good. She'll check on Oh, no, I'm going to send some letters to Polly Saunders in Santa Barbara, and she'll mail them back again. Now, don't be foolish, Emily. Just because you met a man who happened to have a dime. Oh, darling, don't be like that about it. He's a very charming man. <laughs> Even if he turns out badly, I'll have the fun of experimenting. Here. Yeah. Well, well, you'll need some money. Oh, no, I won't. Not unless my experiment fails. Then, of course, I, I guess I'll have to come home. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Wish me luck. Uh, uh, all right, I do. Oh, uh, just uh, exactly who is this man? I haven't the slightest idea, Jackson. Jackson? <laughs> the thing to remember is that one-fifth of the diet should be chosen from the protein group. Uh, you can say that again, Jackson. Hughes. Richard. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Say, you don't eat much. Well, I, I'm not very hungry. Nervous over losing your job, maybe. Yes, I guess so. I try to get you in where I'm working, but business hasn't been so good lately. Oh, really? Mm. Tell me, where do you work? Baldwin's department store. Oh, I heard them saying down at the store that Mr. Baldwin's daughter dealt a foreign prince this afternoon. Oh. Yeah, here it is right here. That's funny, her face looks like someone I've met. Uh -huh. From what I can see of it. Well, uh, maybe you've just seen her someplace. No, she never comes around the store. Oh, lazy, huh? Yeah. You know, sometimes I feel sorry for Mr. Baldwin. Yeah. Now, what did he ever do to deserve a daughter like that? I don't know, and he's such a good sport, isn't mm -hmm. he? Do you know him? Oh, no, I just heard a lot of talk about him. Oh, he's a great man. Say, we better hurry up and finish because we have to look for a room. Uh -huh. A room? A room for you. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about it. Oh, it's nice. I kind of hoped you'd like it. I do. Tell me, is there is there another one that I could rent? 
Oh, yes, there's lots of them. Oh, that's good. But you said you didn't have any money, and I haven't got any to spare, so don't you think you'd better stay here for tonight? See, this sofa opens into a very comfortable bed. You're just like every other man. No good. Oh, but I'm sorry you feel that way about it. You see, I was just making a little experiment. Gee, it's getting so a fellow can't be nice to a girl without them getting the wrong idea. But you look sort of different, as if, well, a fellow could be friends with you without you misunderstanding. I didn't misunderstand a thing. It's all perfectly clear to me. Oh, but you don't, you don't understand. You see, I have a friend downstairs who's a night watchman, and he won't be in till morning, so I was going to use his room so you could stay here. Oh, I'm sorry, Richard. It's really swell of you. Oh, that's all right. Good night. Good night. Oh. oh. Good night. Good night. How nice. Emily, Emily, time to go to breakfast. Come on in, I have breakfast ready. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't know you could cook. <laughs> it doesn't take much cooking to make toast. I won't guarantee you coffee, though. Here, let me do it. Thank you. You sit down. You look very nice this morning. Thank you. Cream? Please. Must have been a pretty good job you lost. Oh, not so hot. Why? Sure looks like a very expensive dress. Oh, well, uh, being a model, I, I got my clothes cheap. They always wanted us girls to dress well. Say, that's a very good idea. Mm-hmm. Where did you work? At Buckingham's. Buckingham's department store? Mm-hmm. In the uh, women's wear. Oh, no wonder you had to quit. Buckingham's aren't ethical. Well, that's what I thought, too. Especially the man who insulted me. I didn't mean that. But old Jay Buckingham's been fighting Baldwin's department store for five years, cutting prices, giving premiums, everything he can. Yeah, I know. My, uh, my department manager told me about that. Old Buckingham wants to merge with Baldwin's, but he wants to do it on his own terms. Well, he might as well give up, because my... Uh, what I hear of Mr. Baldwin, he'll never give in. You bet he won't. Not old R.C. He's a fighter. You bet he is. You know, it's too bad that daughter of his didn't inherit some of his horse sense. Say, I better hurry because I'll, I'll oh, be late. Richard, you haven't eaten a thing. Oh, before I go, here's some money. It's, it's all I've got. You can use some of it chasing around after a job, and you better buy some food for dinner with the other dollar because uh, we'll have to eat in tonight. But Richard, I can't stay here again tonight. Well, if you don't, where will you stay? I don't know, but I'll find something. Oh, forget it. You're welcome to stay here until you can find yourself a job, and then maybe you can get an advance on your pay and get your own room and pay me back. Richard, do you have to wear those things? No, but... Uh, they give a man dignity and presence, and after all, that's what helps push a fellow ahead in my business. Oh, yes. Well, see you tonight. Bye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen of the department, this morning we're to have a message of the most vital importance from Mr. R.C. Baldwin himself. It's a message affecting each and every one of you, so I know you will give our chief your most earnest attention. They're waiting, Mr. Baldwin. Miss Flynn, this is the most difficult thing I ever did in my life. I know. If it hadn't been for Buckingham... It can't be helped. No, I know. It can't be helped now. Good morning, fellow workers. Good morning, Mr. Baldwin. What I'm going to say will not be very pleasant. In fact, it makes me very unhappy to have to say it. You all know that despite business conditions, we've kept our full staff through many difficult years. But well, now, we're forced to make a cut, a severe cut. I have discussed the problem with the heads of the various departments, and we've decided that there's only one way to do it. I do not wish the wives and children of any of our employees to suffer in any manner. To prevent this, we're dismissing only unmarried male employees. Some of you have been with us for many years. I wish to reward the loyalty and the devotion you have shown. Each employee leaving this organization today will receive a bonus, as generous as we can make it. 
To those of you who are leaving, I say goodbye and good luck. To those of you who stay and must carry the increased burden, I say fight on. Good morning. Good morning. Too bad, Richard. What? Too bad you wasted so much time reading all those success books. Hard work and study's a lot of bunk. Yeah. You've been working your head off. So now you lose your job because you're not married. Say, uh, you know, if I wasn't going steady, I'd marry you myself. Then you could keep your job. Well, that's very kind of you, Miss Lewis. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. But that won't be necessary. Oh, Hughes, I'm awfully sorry. Sorry about what? That you must leave us. Of course, you uh, have your faults, but in the main, you're a very efficient assistant. It's too bad you're not married. Oh, but I am. Married? Since when? About a year now. Uh, I thought you'd met uh, Emily. No, I've not met Emily. A childhood sweetheart. She's from Indiana, and I'm from Illinois. Uh, sort of neighbors. Oh, I see. Well, you really must meet her sometime. I should very much like to meet your wife. You must come up to our flat on Saturday. I presume you both play bridge. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, we'd be glad to come Saturday. Although, maybe I'd better speak to Emily first. I come in? Of course. Hello. Hello. What's the matter? Hard day at the store? Oh, no. No, everything was great. Oh, Richard. You don't have to lie to me. I'm not your wife, you know. I wish you were. Your, your wife? I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. Why? Because I'm single. They're discharging all the unmarried men. Oh. So that's why you wish we were married? Yeah. Just for convenience. It's going to be darned inconvenient when they find out I'm not married. When they find out? Don't they know? No. Oh. I lied about it. And that isn't all. I've accepted an invitation from my department manager for Saturday night for myself and my wife. Oh, sometime between now and Saturday night, I've got to get a wife if I'm going to keep my job. And her name's got to be Emily. Emily? Well, it was the first name I thought of. You see, I don't know any other girls in New York. Oh, my goodness. You have got yourself in a jam, haven't you? Yeah. There's nothing in the books I've read either that could help me out of this thing. Look, Richard, would it help if I went to dinner Saturday night and pretended to be your wife? Well, it might help me over Saturday, but... Oh, sooner or later, he'd get on to me. I guess I'm just sunk. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. I wish I could do something to help you. Thanks. But I'll figure something out. Richard, you remember last night you told me that you wished you could find a girl that you could be friends with? One that didn't misunderstand everything you did? That's right. Well, you see, I... I'm looking for a man like that. You are? Mm-hmm. And I, I made up my mind that if I found one that respected me for myself alone, I'd, I'd marry him. You know, I had the same idea about a girl I was looking for. And I found her. You have? I found her on top of a bus, and she still owes me a dime. Oh. Will you marry me? To save the job. Well, we both have to eat. <laughs> Jackson. Hughes. <laughs> Miss Flynn, 
Take a letter to Worcester Textile Mills. Gentlemen, yours of the 16th received. Please advise that we will take care of the matter. Would you mind repeating that again, sir? Hey, look. <laughs> Hello. Well, you look like a million, but you certainly had me worried. What's up now? Hold your breath, Daddy. I'm a married woman. Married? Mm-hmm. Not to that fella, the one you met, the one who loaned you a dime? That's the one. I won't allow it. I'll have it annulled. Oh, no, you won't, darling. After all, I'm over 21, you know. Yes, but who is he? Who's his family? What's he do? Well, I... I don't know very much about his family. All I know is that his name is Richard Hughes, and he comes from Illinois, and he sells neckties. <sighs> necktie salesman? Mm hmm He sells neckties, and I love him. Where does he sell these neckties? Downstairs. But a clerk in my own store, marrying the boss's daughter? I'll have him fired. Oh, no, Daddy, don't do that. Not just yet. You see, he doesn't know that I'm your daughter. Well, then he must be an awful imbecile. Oh, no, he's not. See, I lied to him, and if he ever found out who I really am, well, I might lose him. Oh, Daddy, dear, please be nice to him for my sake. Well, I suppose an excise salesman is better than a Balkan prince, if you love him. Are you sure, Poodles? Positive. All right, I'll do what I can for him. Well, it mustn't be because of me, or he mustn't even know who I am. Yeah, I know, I know. It's got to be because he's industrious, conscientious, and loyal. Oh, is he? Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what your mother's going to say about this necktie salesman. Well, we won't tell her for a while. Sooner or later, we'll figure out some way of breaking the news to her. Yeah. What do you mean, we will? I don't want any part of it. All right, darling, then I will. Now I've got to run along and get some things for dinner. I'm getting to be quite the domestic type. What's my son-in-law's name again? I want to meet this young Superman. Hughes, Richard. But don't you let him know that you're watching him. Oh, oh no. I just watch for an opportunity to reward him for his devotion to Baldwin. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes a grand slam in spades, doubled and redoubled. That's game and rubber. It seems to me Mrs. Hughes is unusually clever at cards. <laughs> We haven't won a game all evening. Well, after all, it's only a pastime. But we have lost $4.50. Oh, that's a great pity. The cards seem to be running my way tonight. I'm sure it wasn't all luck. Oh, no, you see, Emily's quite a good bridge player. She's won several prizes. I'm sure she must have. She's really very skillful, if you care to call it that. Then I suppose she has nothing else to do except concentrate on her bridge. Oh, no, I'm really very busy. I do all my own housework. So do I. And all the laundry. So does I my have wife. I have a clean clothes. shirt. So do I. Well, so do I. I'm going to cook and my wife. I've been doing my cooking all my life. I do all my own laundry. So do I. I have to take care of the baby. So do... What did you say? You didn't tell me you had a child? In fact, you never told him you were married. Oh, uh... Well, you really should see our, our son. He, he's quite a boy, isn't he, Emily? Oh, he's such a darling. He's just beginning to crawl, and he's getting two teeth, and, of course, it makes him cross sometimes, but generally his disposition is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And just how old is your baby, Mrs. Hughes? Uh, Richard. Uh... Oh, uh, a year now. Uh, yes, a year. That's very interesting. No, I was just going to say, don't you think we'd better be going? The baby might be needing us, you yes, know. Yes, I think he might. I, I think yes. so, too. I think it's a very good idea to leave when you're ahead. Will you pay them, Clarence, please? Oh, let's call the whole thing square, after all. It was a lot of fun. And... I insist upon paying my just debts. Unless, of course, you'd care to give me a chance to win it back? Why, of course. We'll cut cards. I prefer to have nothing further to do with cards. Thank you. We'll throw for high dice. High dice? What's that? Whoever throws the highest point starts the game. Three. Six. It's your throw. I don't know much about playing, Just Dice. roll them on the table. If you win, I pay you double. If you lose, I don't pay you anything. Well, anything you say. It says 11. What happens now? As if you didn't know. Thank you very much for a most instructive evening. Mr. Morgan, just what did you mean by that? Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, no, I won't. They've been insulting us all evening. I've had about enough. If I were a man, I would sock you on the nose. Richard, you do it. Oh, for the love of Mike, Emily, he's my boss. I'll lose my job. Well, do it. Let's see. He's afraid he wouldn't dare. And as for you, Mrs. Hughes, you leave my wife out of this. Why should he? You're both a couple of cheats. Oh! Now, you take that back. No, she won't. Now, as for your wife. 
Oh. Good night, Mrs. Morgan. You must come and see us sometime. Well, I'm certainly proud of the way you socked him. It was beautiful. Boy, am I in for it now. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. From what you tell me of Mr. Baldwin, I think you'd give you a chance to explain your side of the thing. Well, I might be able to explain about socking Morgan. But what am I going to do about the baby? Oh, I certainly did put my foot in it, didn't I? I'm sorry I got so excited. Oh, it's all right, Emily. I'll find myself another job. You'll do no such thing. Why, you belong right there at Baldwin's. You're practically a member of the family. Uh, we'll find a baby tomorrow. Yeah. We will? Why, certainly. Tomorrow's Sunday, we'll visit the foundling home. Foundling home? Oh, darling. We're so happy. Wouldn't it be wonderful to share our happiness with some homeless baby? Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? I don't want that man to see me. Well, why don't you want that man to see you? Well, uh, that's the man who insulted me in the store, the day I lost my job. Oh, he is, is he? Well, I'll remember that gentleman's face. Sign here, please. Thank you. You know the laws, Mrs. Hughes. You may keep the baby for one year, during which time you are subject to investigation or inspection of your home at any time of the day or night. I understand perfectly. During the year, we can reclaim the baby for any cause that we deem sufficient, and you have no recourse. Yes, I know. And after a year, if you're satisfied with us as parents... Then he's yours. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. You don't know what this means to us. Goodbye. 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 You know, Richard, I believe he actually looks like you. Yeah, all babies look alike. <laughs> but he does look a bit like you, though. Do you think so? Uh-huh. Say, Emily. What? Where's he going to sleep tonight? Oh, I never thought of that. We can get a crib from the drugstore. No, that's the one thing they don't carry. I'll figure something out. I can get a pillow out of here. All right. See? There we are. There. We better keep him covered. I get cold. You know, Emily, Morgan's going to report me the first thing in the morning. And I almost wish that Mr. Baldwin would fire me. Fire you? Why? Well, we've got responsibilities now, and I've got to get ahead. There doesn't seem to be much chance of it at Baldwin's. Oh, darling, don't be so impatient. I'm sure Mr. Baldwin will push you ahead just as fast as he can. I sure hope so. Say, Emily. What? What do you think we ought to call him? <laughs> you know, he, he's got to have a name. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Say, that's not bad at all. You know what he said? No. He said Dick. <laughs> sure he did. Didn't you, fella? Oh. Oh, you didn't. Well, come on. Come on. Say, he's a husky little fella, isn't he? So you're Richard Hughes, eh? Yes, sir. Well, well, well. You're a married man, aren't you, Hughes? Yes, sir. Are you happily married? You bet, sir. That's fine. Fine. Oh, uh... I've had a complaint about you, Hughes. I understand you and your wife visited the Morgans on Saturday night. Yes, sir. I hear that you struck Morgan. Yes, sir. I I'm afraid I did, sir. Had you forgotten that he's your department manager? No, sir. I, I guess I just lost my temper. Uh -huh. Well, why did you strike him? Well, he insulted my wife and me. He did? How? Well, they accused us of cheating at cards and... That sort of started things. Oh. I see. I see. I'm sorry, Mr. Baldwin, but I just couldn't stand there and let him say anything about my wife.
You did right, my boy. You did absolutely right. Respect for womanhood is one of the traditions of this organization. And I'm proud to have a man who risked his job to defend his wife from insult. Richard, you are now head floor walker on the main floor. Head floor walker? As a reward for meritorious service and upholding the traditions of the Baldwin uh, uh, store. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I... Go down now and take on your new duties. Yes, sir. And remember, my boy, I've got my eye on you. I, I certainly will, sir. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hughes, just a minute. Your little outburst has convinced me that you're not fitted to be entrusted with executive duties. Oh. I've discussed the matter with the assistant floor walker and you're to be demoted to the bargain basement. Oh, I see. You report to Miss Tanner in the basement, and she'll acquaint you with your new duties. I believe you're to be in pots and pans. I see. And have you told Mr. Baldwin about this? I talked the matter over with R.C., and he assured me that after today, you'll no longer be in my department. And have you asked the head floor walker about transferring me? The head floor walker? <laughs> well, maybe you better ask the head floor walker, because I'm he. What did you say? The man with the white carnation. Mr. Baldwin put it there himself. I... I don't believe it. It's, it's not fair. It's not right. I was in line for that job. It's mine by all rights of seniority. Well, all I know is Mr. Baldwin made me head floor walker. You better have that mess cleared up right away. I know it's not my place to dispute your decisions, Mr. Baldwin, but I was under the impression that Hughes was to be disciplined. I don't think you know his real disposition, sir. Well, just what is his real disposition? Well, per my memo, he's quarrelsome, hot-tempered, just not the sort of man we need to represent Baldwin to the public. I understand there was a little discussion between you two about his wife. Well, we had a few words, you might say. She's a very inconsequential person. Very in... Consequential person indeed. Possibly, Morgan, possibly. But the wife of any fellow employee is entitled to the greatest respect. I've appointed Mr. Hughes Floor Walker to teach you a lesson. In the future, be more considerate of the feelings of the men who work under you. I understand, Mr. Baldwin. I understand perfectly. I shall expect you to cooperate with Mr. Hughes in any way that he may require. I shall, sir. I certainly shall. Well, that's all, Morgan. Good morning. Good morning, sir, and thank you, sir. I understand you've got a new head floor walker. You'd better be awfully nice to him. No! Yes. Well, how do you like that? Main floor, cosmetics, notions, costume jewelry, men's furnishing, hosiery gloves, and our new floor walker. Well, Phil, did you hear about Mr. Hughes? Being made floor walker? Sure. Well, not only that. No. Yeah. Wait till I tell Sadie. Mr. Buckingham called again about the merger. Hmm. Well, he can go to blazes. We're not merging. We've had the best month we've had in two years. Thanks largely to Richard. No doubt. Yeah. He's a great boy. He's going far. He follows the best traditions of true Americanism. Hard work, honesty, and sincerity. A sure way to get to the top. Sure. That and marrying the boss's daughter. Exactly. What's that? What do you mean? I know it isn't any of my business, Mr. Baldwin, but someone should have told you this long ago. What do you know about Richard, my, my daughter? Why, everybody in the store knows about it, except Richard. Naturally, the employees are afraid to let their gossip get to his ears. Yeah, well, oh, who told them? I don't know. Hmm. But I do know that every employee in the store resents him. 
he's a fine man and a good executive, but nobody stops to think about that. They think you've made him manager because he's your son-in-law. It's going to mean trouble sooner or later. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? As I said, I didn't think it was any of my business. Yeah. If anybody wants me, I'll be a Richard's office. And prizes for the best answers. I have that posted on all the bulletin boards and uh, just sign it, uh, Richard Hughes, store manager. Yes, Mr. Hughes. Good morning, Richard. Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Baldwin. I've just dictated a letter about our first annual dance. Yes, that's fine. Fine. It's a great thing for the morale of the employees, don't you think? It more or less keeps them conscious of the fact that we're just one big happy family. <laughs> we certainly are, aren't we? Oh, Richard, there's something I've been meaning to mention to you in a sort of a casual way I... Yes? Who's that? Oh, well, that's my wife and son, sir. Your, your son, did you say? Yes, sir. Your wife, too? <laughs> Why, of course, sir. Anything strange about that? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. He's a fine-looking boy, isn't he? Yes, he is. He certainly is a fine-looking boy. Doesn't look much like you, son. Uh, well, he uh, probably takes after his grandfather. You really think so? Yes. <laughs> well, that's remarkable, quite remarkable. Uh, yes, he, he's wanting now. He is. Well, that's odd. What? Uh, I mean, uh, if he's well developed for his age, isn't he? Oh, he's a great boy. Yes, he certainly is. Uh, where are you living now, Richard? Uh, 411 West 88th Street. Uh, but why, sir? Oh, I, I just thought I might send the boy a little present, you know, to sort of commemorate his dad's first day as manager of Baldwin's. Why, that's mighty fine of you, Mr. Baldwin. Not at all, not at all. Now, you... I mean, the, the boy's got it coming to him. I'll see you after a while. Yes, sir. I have every reason in the world for coming here. No wonder you haven't been to the store visiting me, you poor kid. Well, where is he? I want to see him. Richard? Isn't no. he at the store? No, no, not Richard. Uh, the baby, my grandson. Your grandson. Yeah. Now I know why you couldn't go through with that marriage to Prince Paul. You were married to Richard all the time. Oh, Poodles, why didn't you take the old man into your confidence? You know that you can trust me. Darling, I'll confess all after you've seen the baby. Mm -hmm. Now, you stay right here. I'll go fetch him. <sighs> Cornelius Hughes. Robert Cornelius Hughes. Well, 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 well. Come here, Grandpop, you little rascal, you. <laughs> oh, she I goes. Get you, get you, get you, get daddy. Why, he's the chip off the old block. Even Richard says it looks exactly like his granddad. Richard? <laughs> Did he tell you about the baby? No, he doesn't know you're my daughter. I just happened to see the picture on his desk. How old is the little rascal? One year. Yeah. Well, you see, he isn't ours. No, not yours? Well, his name's Robert Cornelius Hughes, like mine and Richard's. Well, darling, he is ours in a way. You see, we're adopting him. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Of course, of course. Well, he's a mighty fine baby, just the same. And I think it's wonderful of you and Richard. Let the baby play with the toys. I think it's about time this whole matter of your marriage came out into the open. Oh, not yet, Daddy. We're so completely happy. And if Richard found out, well, you know how he is. I do know. That's the reason I say let's tell him the truth. You see, everybody else already knows it. What do you mean, everybody? Well, everybody at the store, except Richard. Oh, but they couldn't. Uh-huh, but they do. And it's caused a lot of talking. And sooner or later, Richard's bound to hear it. Now let us tell him before he gets a new second hand. It'll be better coming from us. Oh, I don't know what to say. I know it's got to come out sooner or later. When it does, I hate to think what'll happen. 
Well, let me think it over for a day or two, will you? All right. But you better make up your mind in a hurry. Uh, I will. <laughs> How's Mother? Worrying about you. You see, your letters from California don't come as often huh? as they used to. I'll have to send Polly some more. <laughs> well, so I'm a granddaddy, hey? <laughs> Young fella, you're going to have a greatly surprised grandmother. Mind what I said, Emily. You better think fast, because if you don't tell Richard pretty soon, I'll tell him myself. Yeah. And so, fellow workers, we know that each and every one of you will be in there fighting for that bonus on Dollar Day. Baldwin's is depending on you to make it the biggest sale of the year. Good morning. Good morning. We'll show Buckingham a thing or two this time, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> yes, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, uh, Richard? Uh, yes, sir? What? Uh, how is your wife? Oh, why, she's fine, thank you. And the baby? Couldn't be better. He has another tooth now. Yeah, you don't mean it. Absolutely. And sitting up to the big table in his high chair. <laughs> you might find youngster. Uh, Richard, have you had any conversation with your wife uh, lately? Why, yes, sir. Every morning and every evening. But why, sir? Oh, well, I was just wondering. Man ought to talk things over with his wife now and then, you know. Well, I always do, sir. Well, that's fine. Uh, Richard, what sort of family does your wife come from? I mean, uh, do you know anything about them? Why, she never says much about them. They must be very unpleasant people. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as you're concerned, you wouldn't care what they had been, whether they were laboring people or maybe criminals or very wealthy, would you? Why, no, sir. It wouldn't make the slightest difference to me, but... But why? <laughs> Just making conversations, I guess. See, what I'm driving at, Mrs. Baldwin would like very much to meet your wife. Could you bring her to dinner tonight? Oh, you bet I could. Emily would be delighted. Yeah. Well, <laughs> till this evening. And be sure and bring Mrs. Hughes. Oh, don't worry, sir. She'll be there. Oh, for crying out loud, Emily. I'm sorry, Richard. It's out of the question. Do you mean you simply refuse to go? For the last time, I tell you, I have a headache. Well, that's fine. That's just dandy. I work night and day, giving everything I've got to get ahead. And now the biggest opportunity of all comes along. Mr. Baldwin invites us to his home to dinner. And you won't go because you've got a headache. Darling, I realize even better than you how important tonight is, but if I go to dinner, I... I well, it might be sort of embarrassing. No, oh, for the love of Mike, just because you think you need a new dress. I didn't mean that exactly. Then what in the world do you mean? Are you going to tear down everything I've built up by my industry and my loyalty and my hard work Oh, you and... make me sick. You're a swell-headed, pompous, stuffed shirt trying to make yourself think you're a big shot. You'd still be selling neckties if you... If... Well, go on. If what? If you hadn't been so lucky. I'm sorry, Richard, but you'll have to go to dinner by yourself. All right, I will. Mrs. Hughes? Oh, yes. Could you sign here, please? Thank you. LaGuardia Airport, please. Hello? Airport? There's a Prince Stephanie arriving on the 7 o'clock plane. A Prince Paul Stephanie. Would you ask him to wait at the airport, please? What? A half hour early? Oh, thank you. I did so want to meet your wife, Mr. Hughes. Mr. Baldwin's been telling me what a wonderful person she is and what a splendid boy you have. Yes, I feel I have a right to be proud of my little family. 
But when my wife gets those headaches, they really make her very miserable. Oh, poor child. I must remember to give you some of the medicine that Emily always uses. <clears throat> Emily? Yes, our daughter. Why, that's my wife's name, too. What an odd coincidence. Yes, isn't it? Our Emily's in California at the time, but someday she and your wife must meet. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, very nice. I can hardly wait. I had a letter from her yesterday. She's having such a lovely time. Paul, what on earth are you doing? I have been to California. Emily is not there. Not there? She has not been there. What were those letters? I do not know anything about any letters. All I know is that I have been robbed of my pigeon. I have been lied to. I have been pushed back and forth. Oh. I demand explanation. Now listen, Your Highness, we're eating dinner and we have a guest. If you'll wait in the study. I will not wait. I have finished waiting. I have been insulted and deceived. Well, confound it all. Can't you let us finish our dinner? Dinner? You think of dinner and my heart is breaking. Oh. You heard Mr. Baldwin. He wants you to leave the room. Who are you to tell me what to do, huh? I won't tell you, mister. I'll show you. <laughs> this is your There you oh, are. This is incredible. I'm going to tell you something. Now, look. I will consult my lawyer. And furthermore, I will consult my embassy. You may have to consult a doctor oh. before I get through with you. Now, well, that's for Mr. Baldwin and me. And after this, don't go around insulting working girls. Mr. Hughes, I think you would better explain your extraordinary conduct. Well, now, you see, Sally's no, like I this. Don't. My picture, my sweet one. Don't Emily, Emily. Oh, so Hello. Oh, hello, darling. Emily, darling. Darling? Well, yes, this is my wife and son. Indeed not. This is my daughter. Your daughter? Yes. Oh, I suppose this is your grandson, too. Well, I never saw the child before in my life. Well, now, you see, Sally. I emphatically do not. Emily, where did you get this baby? Not in California, surely. Uh, no, at a foundling home. We decided it'd be much better if we... Yeah. Uh, now, wait a minute. Well, now, somebody let me well, explain. Well, I think someone better explain when our daughter... Emily, a... please tell them that you're my wife. Oh, I am your wife, Richard, but I'm, I'm also their daughter. His Is wife? Having... Their daughter? Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, oh so that's why I got all those promotions. Oh, Well, you no, don't have to tell me anything well, now, else. Now, Richard, there's nothing wrong. Oh, it's really quite wrong. funny, don't you Yes, think it is, isn't it? It's funny. It's very funny. <laughs> I don't... Richard! Emily. You say you haven't heard from him at all? Not a word since last night. Neither have I. By the time I got home, he just packed his things and just gone. Well, now I wouldn't worry about it. I only hope he's taking good care of the baby. Well, he'll do that at least, I hope. You love him, don't you, Poodles? Yes. I like the boy, too. And sooner or later, your mother would come to like him. Although I must admit I had some difficulty in explaining about the baby. Daddy, what am I to do? I love him and I love the baby. I don't think I've done anything so terrible just because I turned out to be your daughter. I'm afraid that's the worst crime you could have committed. You see, Richard is one of those energetic young rascals who pride themselves on their vim and vigor. He likes to earn what he gets, and he resents it if anybody hands him anything. Darling. Richard, my boy. If you don't mind, sir, I'd like to make my speech from your office. Well, of course, Richard, of course. You'll find a copy of the speech on the desk. I won't need that. Fellow workers, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The title of my speech this morning is The Road to Success. People will tell you that the qualities which bring success are industry, thrift, and loyalty. They will tell you that if you work hard and conscientiously, you're bound to win in the end. I myself have told you things like that in the past. But I was wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I was terribly wrong. I want now to give you the one sure formula for success. A tried and proven formula. A formula that can't miss. Marry the boss's daughter. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, your boss has but one daughter. However, I promise you that within a very short time, she'll be free. Good luck. And goodbye. Now, listen, son. Now, let's talk this over. Just the three of us. There's nothing more to talk about, sir. Oh, yes, there is, Richard. You can't walk out like this. Can't I? No, darling. I'm your wife. I'll take care of that. Richard, if you must, but remember, I love you. That's a laugh. Well, it may be to you, but it's not so very funny to me. One more thing. About the baby. He'll be well taken care of. Oh, but a man can't take care of a baby. My keys are on my desk, sir. On top of my resignation. There, there, honey.
I don't know, Hughes. I tried to bust old R.C. with every clean weapon I could find. But I never hired any of his executives away from him. Well, you won't be hiring me away, Mr. Buckingham. I've already resigned. Now, if you don't need a manager, I'll take anything from floor walker to stock boy. Hmm. Well, I need a manager, all right. I'm sending my present manager around to Chicago to open a buying office. If you want to start at the same salary R.C. paid you, I'll have an office fixed up for you. But mind, I expect results. Don't worry, sir. You'll get them. I tell you, a merger is to the best interest of both of us. I happen to know that you've been running in the red, R.C. Great Scott, man. I'm just trying to do you a favor. Well, once and for all, the answer is no. And before I get through with you, I wouldn't be surprised if you came to me for favors. You're bluffing, R.C. Well, when you decide to accept my proposition, come over and see me. Oh, by the way... What's your special for Saturday? <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> I don't mind telling you mine. Umbrellas, two dollar values. I picked up a job lot for 79 cents, and I'm advertising them for 69 cents. And losing a dime on every umbrella? Sure. But I'll sell a couple of dollars worth of other goods to every customer that comes in. That's good business, R.C. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find it out sometime. <laughs> well, so long. Yeah. Goodbye. It's unfair. You're being driven into bankruptcy on account of a quarrel that Richard and I had. No, no. Oh, but it's please. true, Daddy. As long as he was here, you gave Buckingham's a run for their money. Now that he's over there, business is just... Oh, well, I've got to hand it to the boy. With all his faults, he's a cracking good department store man. Isn't there some chance of you two getting together again? He won't even talk to me on the telephone. Well, that's the trouble with Richard. He's got too big for his britches. Umbrella, 69 cents. That's not merchandising. That's shop shooting. Well, one of these days he'll outsmart himself. Say, why shouldn't he? Daddy, I've got a wonderful idea. Oh. No, I didn't come to talk, Merger Richard. Then what can I do for you, Mr. Baldwin? I want you to call off that umbrella sale Saturday. I'm afraid that's impossible. How did you find out about well, it? Well, never mind how I did, and that's enough. And take it from me, son. If you don't call off that sale, it'll be the beginning of the end of Buckingham's. I don't see what you can do about it. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, I'll tell you. I'll sell that same quality umbrella for 59 cents. I've checked the market. There isn't another shipment available. You can't buy any umbrellas of Oh, that yes, I can. Will you call off the sale? No, I'm afraid I can't do that. All right. Don't forget I've warned you. Give my regards to Mr. Buckingham. Now, each of you has been given $10. When Buckingham's open their doors, go over there and buy an umbrella. Every one of you. Bring them back here and give them to Mr. Pearson. He'll have charge of this counter. And after you've bought one umbrella, go back and buy another. Keep bringing them here until Buckingham is completely sold out. Buckingham's opening. All right, get going. Well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear it, Emerson. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. Buckingham. I just talked to the head floor walker on the main floor. He says the umbrella sale is a sensation. The department is swamped. I can't figure it out. Can't figure what out? How are sales going over so big when Baldwin's advertising the same umbrella ten cents cheaper? Well, Baldwin probably had only a few umbrellas in stock, sold them out in a hurry, and the customers are rushing over here. Well, that's possible. There's something screwy somewhere. Let you and I take a little walk over to Baldwin and see what's going on. Huh? All right. I can't understand it. Mr. Hughes, Mr. Buckingham. Why, they're buying our umbrellas and underselling us. Mr. Baldwin can't get away with this. Mr. Hughes, I'm a customer in this store. Release me or I shall take measures. Let him go, let him go. I'll fix Baldwin. Yes, but what are you going to do? There's only one thing to do. Send our people over to Baldwin's store and buy back those umbrellas. Come up to my office. Mr. 
me, please. Why, hello, Buckingham. Thank you for a record-breaking day. It's piracy, R.C., and you know it. Oh, no, it's smart merchandise, you know. <laughs> That's what you always call it. <laughs> You've ruined my day's business. I never thought I'd see the day when you turn crook, R.C. Well, I'm not crooked, Buckingham. I'm just outsmarting you, and I'm going to keep right on doing it. Every time you have a sale, I'll raid your stock, undersell you, and do it at half what it costs you to supply me with merchandise. Where have you been? I've been trying to find you for two hours. I'm sorry, sir, but I yeah. gotta take the baby to the doctor. Oh, how is he? All right, just another tooth. I left him in the store nursery until I go home tonight. <laughs> Good. Uh, here's our financial statement for the past two months. I've seen it. Baldwin's got us lashed to the mast. We've lost $25,000 a week for ten weeks. I know, sir. But that's a quarter of a million dollars. I know, sir, and I don't know what we're going to do about it. Well, I do. I'm going to call Baldwin. But you're not going to merge on his terms. Get Baldwin's office for me. I've got to make some kind of a deal. Hello? Mr. Baldwin, please. Hello? Oh, yes. I've been expecting you to call. How's that? Oh, indeed? Well, I'm very busy now. Uh, I'll send my store manager right over. Thanks. You started this with that umbrella deal of yours. Now we've got him where we want him. Go over and close the deal, and good luck. Yes, I know, I know. But at least Baldwin might have done me the courtesy to come over himself. Well, I have his full authority to make any deal that we agree upon. I also have some personal things I'd like to discuss with Mr. Hughes. Hmm. I see. Well, you make your proposition to Hughes, now discuss it with him in the morning. And remember, Hughes, I expect to see you two get together. I'll make the best deal possible, sir. Let's see that you do. Yes, sir. Good night, Emily. Good night. Well, I suppose we'd better talk this whole thing over. Here's our proposition. The two stores are to merge. Well, that's been Mr. Buckingham's idea all along, providing it can be done on our terms. I'm afraid it'll have to be done on our terms. What are they? Well, the major point is the sales policy. As combined stores, we'll have to go back to the old Baldwin method of no cut price merchandise. The buying will be supervised by Baldwin department managers. And of course, the advertising will be controlled by us. Is that all? Uh, no, one more thing. The stores will be known as Baldwin and Buckingham. Here are a few more details. I'll read these over and submit the terms to Mr. Buckingham in the morning. But I can tell you right now, he won't accept. Well, if he doesn't, then we shall have to continue as we have, knocking the props out from under you every time you have a sale. Oh, Richard, let's talk about ourselves. There's nothing to talk about. Two sensible people can't wreck their lives like this. You can't hate me that much that you won't even talk to me. Everything's been said that can be said. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait a minute. About the baby. Yes? What about him? I had a letter from the foundling home. They've heard about our separation. Well, what did they say? Well, it was sort of a warning that if we didn't have a genuine home for the baby, we'd, we'd have to give him up. Richard, I love you. I know I lied to you from the beginning and I hurt your feelings. I'm ashamed about that, but... But you see, it was such a wonderful thing having a man love me who didn't know who I was and who didn't give a darn for my money. All right, Richard. But what about the baby? He's not mine. He's not yours. He's ours. We can't let him go back to the orphanage. We won't. I'll get lawyers. It can be handled some way. Richard, could I see him sometime? Oh, yes, you can see him now if you'd like. He's in the store nursery. I'll show you where it is. Ruth, I thought I told you to stay with the baby until I came to get him. Well, he went to sleep, Mr. Hughes, and I figured if I stayed there, I'd go to sleep too. So I thought I'd better get on with my work. Uh, he's all right. Yes, but you should have stayed with him. Yeah.
He's right in here in one of the cribs. Well, Richard, he's not here. Well, you're right. I wonder where he is. I told that roof to stay with him. Oh, Bob! Bob! He's probably out here in the toy department. You look down this line, I'll look over here. Bob! Bobby! 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 Oh, Bob. Bobby. Like it? Well, how did all this happen? Oh, I don't know. I guess I bumped him. Bobby! Richard! He's not here. Something's happened to him. Well, if Ruth had only stayed with him. Let's call the police. No, let's look in the sport goods department first. circuit. Like a teddy bear got the best of it. Roof! Better get some water. Yeah. Roof! Roof! Oh, take him off! Take him off! Take him off! Take who off? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Hugh. I was walking down the aisle, and six of them jumped out and started beating me with clubs. Six what? Six men. Oh, Richard, the baby's been kidnapped. Nonsense. Roof just had one too many. Bob! Bobby! He must be around Bobby. here. Bobby! Take care of him all by myself. Do you suppose that? Oh, yeah. Bobby, do we suppose? Bobby. Do we? Bobby. Do we? Bobby. <laughs> Papa. Oh yes, Papa. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> 